All right. So today we're going to do another little uh, GIMP tutorial, and um, let me go get it started real quick. And um, it's basically going to be another like retro, I guess, uh, tutorial. Um, this is my own personal technique that I've been using for a while for you know family and friends who uh, ask me to do this for them. So I figured I'd just share it with you guys. Um, you know, it's it's not too hard, but it's just a mixture of curves and color modes, right? Um, I'll show you what I mean right now. But it's pretty pretty easy to do. So let me uh, minimize this real quick. So I chose this photo here of Miss uh, Ricci, right? And um, I guess she has a new show or something. Uh, it's it's in the 60s, so the photograph is pretty cool. You know, it's like a period piece, I guess. You know, they're all in their outfits from the 60s and stuff like that. So I figured this would be a good one to uh, work with. And um, let me go ahead and drag it in here. And like I was saying before in my last tutorial, like there's different ways of doing this, and there's also like different styles that I've been noticing. There's like a like an over exaggeration of retro, like with uh, pinks and blues, and there's like real subtle style, and there's like a mix of the, of the two, I guess. So I guess that's what I'm gonna be doing today. It's just real subtle, but you know it's noticeable, I guess. So anyways, so first things first, we gotta duplicate the layer a couple times. So one, two, all right. So we got three layers to work with. Right, in the very top layer, we're going to go to colors, curves, right? Now, in the blue section, we're going to kind of like overdo it just a bit. So let's grab it all the way up and it's all the way down, like so. And that should be all right. Now, a green, kind of leave it where it is at the bottom right here, but just raise it up over here just a hair. And just a little bit down, not too much. Might be too much. Right about there, that looks good. All right, now red, uh, take away red quite a bit. I'll raise this up quite a bit. And there we go, we got the basics of it already. All right, right there. Now, <clears throat> let's go ahead and uncheck the eyeball right here. Now, in this middle layer, we're gonna desaturate it. Go colors, desaturate. Okay, click on average. Press OK. Now go to Filters, Artistic, Soft Glow. And with Soft Glow, uh, depending on what you're working with, if there's, if there's like a lot of whites or a lot of contrast, you know, with you know darks and whites, you may want to adjust it. For this image, it looks all right the way it is. So press OK. There we go. Now go ahead and check back on this little eyeball again. And this mode selection right here, we're going to select Color like so. Oh, I'm sorry. Put that on normal. I put the wrong one. Sorry about that. The middle layer, leave it on normal. It's the upper layer, the one we just messed around with the curves. Set that to color. Sorry about that. Color. There we go. Now you can see how it kind of has this weird, you know, uh, glowy effect. That's like basically what we're overdoing it right now. So in the middle section, the one that we just desaturated, um, lower that down quite a bit. There we go. Not too much. We just basically want to get some of the uh, the contrast from the whites. We want the whites to pop pretty good, and also the other colors as well, just by using the the soft glow. Right about there. All right. Now, go ahead and make another transparent layer, and put that transparent layer on the very top, like so. Okay. Now. With this uh, transparent layer, we're gonna frame the image. We're gonna frame her, basically. So get the ellipse tool and put it on her. Basically, uh, you know, frame her a bit. Right about there. Pretty close to her. All right, now go to Select, Invert. Now go to Select, Feather. And feather this fairly high, maybe about in the hundreds, maybe like 180 or so. Press OK. Now go into your color selection, and we're gonna just pick a basic, uh, a, pa a basic gray, not black, not white, but like you know, like a, a medium gray. All right. Now get your bucket fill tool and fill it. There we go. Select none. All right. Now. With this uh, transparent layer we just fill with gray, set that mode to color as well. Now you have a 
a color to a desaturation desaturation fade, right? But I don't want to completely de you know desaturate the edges. So go ahead and just uh, lower down the slider where it says opacity. You want just a gradual fade, like so. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now make another transparent layer. And one thing I noticed with older pictures, like actual physical older pictures I, that I have, the edges of the of the photograph tend to tend to wear a little bit. Not necessarily scratches, but they have like a, a yellowy kind of a I don't know, maybe like a stain to it, I guess. So let's go ahead and um, um, we're going to get the triangular uh, select tool, and we're going to go ahead and uh, select the image again, like so. But not not around her, but around the edges. But leave about maybe about 10 pixels like this now on the tool selection of that of this selection right here um, where it says uh, rounded corners select that and bump the uh, the radius up quite a bit now you have this nice little rounded edge right now go to select invert and let's pick a like a dirty yellow color I guess like so Let's go ahead and fill it with the bucket tool. Now go select none. Now go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And blur it fairly high, you know, like 50s or so, 70s. Now with that, this layer again, this transparent transparent layer we just made with the yellowy uh, blur, set that to color as well. Now put that yellowy blur color below the gray color all right let's go ahead and lower lower down just a bit like so play around with the sliders just to here now it looks all right I like the way that looks so I can you kind of have like a older like an edge fade to the saturation to a color that's been modified so let's go ahead and just save it. File, save as. I'm sorry, save as. Put that as two. Save, export, and that's fine. Okay, so here's the before. And here's the after. So it has a little bit of a fade, kind of a, a nice little uh, glow to it where the, the colors kind of contrast and pop out just a little bit. Here's a before and after. So like I said, it's real subtle, but it's noticeable. There we go. Now, as far as the, the, the glow effect, right? Like I said, I do have some older photographs of my family from back then, 60s and 50s, and I do notice this where the whites are kind of like, they pop out for whatever reason, like um, like the aperture is open too long or whatever it is. So that's really up to you if you want to go the, go that route. It's that middle layer. You can always choose not to do that. But I just like the way it looks. So anyways. So anyways, that's it for today, and uh, thanks for watching.